Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in the Gospel of Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter 4. We resume our study in verse 9. We're right in the middle of looking at the temptation of Jesus Christ. He had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was out in the wilderness by himself, and the devil came and tempted him. Hit him in his weak spots. But Jesus prevails, as we see. Get your Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 4. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is where you can study the entire Bible with me, all the way from Genesis through Revelation, almost four complete series, three complete. And all you have to do is choose the series, choose the book of the Bible, the section, click and listen, and you're set to go. Bring a hunger for God's word in your Bible to the BibleVerseByVerse.com and study the word of God with me, the whole counsel of God, which is the way God wants us to study. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus, as I said, has been tempted. He's tempted with three separate temptations by Satan in the wilderness. Let's pick it up in verse 8, which is where we left off. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The devil said, Jesus, I'll give you all these kingdoms. I'll give you you the world. All you have to do is worship me. The devil is the ruler of this present age. That's what the Bible says. Yes, it is true that Scripture teaches that this world is the Lord's and all the fullness thereon, but the Bible also says that Satan is the ruler of this present age, meaning this, he has influence over all the people in this world except for those who are saved by receiving Christ as Lord and Savior and led by God's Spirit. Other than that, he influences every other person in this world. Success in this world doesn't necessarily indicate that a person is godly. God could be blessing someone's faithfulness, that's true. But it could be that that person is playing by the devil's rules. And that's a good way to get ahead, temporarily, in this world. Manipulating, lying, flattery, stealing, and other things like that, sinful things, sometimes pays off in the short term in this world. If people do things the devil's way, they can get ahead in this world. Temporarily. And the devil must have thought that he was dealing with a spiritual rookie when he tried to cut a deal with Christ. Do things my way, and I'll give you everything. 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Jesus said, get out of here, Satan. Jesus said that we must only serve and worship Almighty God. No matter how much we may want to do something, we shouldn't do it if it means disobeying God. No matter how badly we may want something, we shouldn't conform to the wishes of the one who can give it to us if conforming means disobeying God. It's not worth it. 
at that point, we have to say, keep it. I'd rather go without it and be right with God. 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Satan and his demons will only sit around and listen to us say no to their temptations for so long. They don't give up easy. But if we resist them by conforming to Scripture, they will go find someone else to bother. Scripture says that the devil knows his time is short. He's not stupid. He wants to make the most of his time, the time that he has left. The devil left Jesus because he could not get Jesus to sin. Oh, he'll be back. But he left him for now. And the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. 12. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. John the Baptist announced that Jesus is the Messiah. He was the forerunner. And he also announced that people should follow Jesus. Now John is arrested for his preaching, which means that Jesus could be the next one to be arrested because they preached basically the same message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so Jesus heads up north to Galilee because if we can avoid trouble and still be in the will of God, then we should do it. 13. And leaving Nazareth, so he went way up north, Galilee, Nazareth, that's where he was raised. And he left, or leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, that's still up north, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee, of the nations, the people who sat in darkness saw great light, and to them who sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. The people up north were in darkness because they didn't know God or didn't even know the truth about God. Oh, they had a lot of religion. But remember, the religious leaders of our Lord Day, our Lord's Day, were teaching the doctrines of men, not the pure word of God. So the people were in darkness. And that's why Jesus went from place to place. He told as many people as he could all about the real God and gave them the pure word of God. We can't sell Jesus to people by giving them false promises. We can't argue people into the kingdom of heaven if they don't want it. All we can do is give them the truth. Give them the truth about Jesus and the cross and repentance and let them decide for themselves. But that's what Jesus did. He traveled around. And he gave them the gospel, the message of salvation. And after he gave it out, he went on to the next town and to the next people. He left it up to them. 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Again, that was his message. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in recent years, I have heard evangelical leaders say, and, and this goes on, much further than recent years. This goes back, actually, a few decades. Evangelical leaders. I've heard them with my own miserable ears say, never ever tell an unsaved person to repent. What? I've heard it. I've read it. In their writings, never t tell an unsaved person to repent. And of course, I have heard others in that community who know that such a ridiculous statement is contradicted many places in Scripture say, oh, yes, yes, 
unbelievers must repent. But then they proceed to redefine repentance. They say, they say repentance means you change your mind about Jesus. And what they mean by that is, I used to not believe that Jesus is the Savior, but now I believe, therefore I have repented. No, that's not repentance. Because repentance always includes turning away from sin. Study the word repentance. This is another, I'm telling you, this is the only way to teach the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Because if you study the whole Word of God and the doctrine of repentance from Genesis to Revelation, you, you, if, you, if you did that, you wouldn't accept such a miserably ridiculous statement as, number one, never tell anybody to repent, or number two, yes, repent, which means just have a change of mind about Jesus. Because that's not what the Bible means by repentance in the Old Testament or New. It is always connected to sin. Sins. Repentance always includes turning away from sin. Jesus' message was repent of your sins. But I'll tell you what, people have a lot of nerve preaching a different message than Jesus did and still calling it Christian, and still calling it Bible teaching. That's why churches today, modern evangelical churches are filled with people who only go to places that entertain and aren't rubbed the wrong way by the Word of God because, because they're not saved. There's no hunger for the pure Word of God. There's no hunger for pure worship just to have their senses tickled and their so-called worship music. Eighteen, and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus came across Peter and Andrew while they were working. Notice, he found them while they, while, while they were working. Doesn't matter what you're doing. If you have a heart for God and a hunger for God's word, God will get, you, God will get through to you. He'll get through to you while you're working. He'll get through to you while you're taking a walk. He'll get through with you while you're looking at scenery. He'll get through with you no matter what you're doing to you. He'll get through to you. He'll speak to your heart. The important thing is to have a heart for God so that we pay, pay attention when he attempts to get through to us. 19. And look at this. And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus took the thing that they were doing, they were catching fish, and he used it as an illustration to what he wanted them to do. That's exactly what I was talking about. God could use anything in our life as illustrations to communicate his word to us and his will to us. Now, it all has to fall in line with the Bible. It can't contradict the scripture. It's not of God. But God uses a lot of things. I remember one time I was walking. Um, I was walking across this field. And there was, you know, nobody ever walked on it because it was just a big old empty field. And I came across this tiny little purple flower. It was really pretty, but it wasn't any bigger than a, oh, I don't know, quarter inch. And I spotted it. And immediately, just by looking at that, I know God spoke to me through that flower and said, I put that out here where nobody would see it. I still put it out here. I put it out here for you to see, for one person to see. And I'm confident nobody else ever saw that thing before it lived out its short existence because of where it was. But it blessed me because it was pretty. And then the message that God sent to that little flower was, I put that out here for you. Nobody else will see that. But I still made it for you to see. 
And it hit me. It doesn't matter how many people listen to me teach the Word of God. If only one person tunes in to Scripture verse by verse, if only one person is drawn closer to Jesus Christ through Scripture verse by verse, it's worth it. I'm out of time, over time. Continue studying with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Until next time, remember you can be a part of this ministry. Pray for me, pray for God's word. Click the donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. See you next time.